uh, this morning I want to talk about something that might seem a little silly on the surface, but actually does uh, serve a point because Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a unique game in a couple of ways. Uh, and one of those is that it's a limited release. And because it's a limited release, it makes the physical copy of the game extremely collectible. I've actually heard from many of you guys uh, that you guys bought a physical copy, but then bought it digitally to play. There are some people who actually just bought it physically just to keep it sealed, just as a collector's item. Didn't even care about playing the games since they just happen to be essentially the same games from our childhood with you know some tweaks for controls. And yeah, HD is nice, but maybe not enough for some people to care. They just wanted it as a collectible. Well, one thing about it being a collectible, and this is one of the, the weird things uh, out there, is there's some issues with the way the cartridge itself is presented in one region versus another. But before we get into that, I want to remind you that we do have two giveaways going on right now. One is for three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and the other one is for a Switch Lite and two Switch games of choice. It can be any game on Switch. Uh, to you know, get those, go down in the description. You'll figure out how to enter. Good luck. Winners are announced October 1st. All right, so... How this works is there's essentially the North American version and the PAL version. There's actually versions all over the world. But the reason we're focusing on this is because the PAL version um, or Hong Kong or whatever you want to call it, the version that they have is not only titled differently and maybe in a way that would create less controversy, it's a nicer looking cartridge. So you're seeing on screen right now. This uh, tweet by Daniel Ahmed, blown up. Uh, and you'll see on the right is what it looks like in North America. So that is the Super Mario 3D All-Star North America with the ESRB rating on. On the left, you see what other regions have, are getting, by the way, calling it a collection and not All-Stars. Uh, and you'll see it does not have a rating on it. And it makes for a much cleaner looking Switch game. Now, to be fair to the kind of hack job it seems is happening on the North American one, all Switch games in North America have the ESRB rating on the cartridge in that same location at the same size it seems to be a standard required thing by the esrb to do uh and it had to be at a size that's legible and so that is, is what it is now there's some things nintendo could have did design wise to still make this look nicer they could have taken the super mario 3d all-stars logo shrunk it a bit and then uh, put it above the ESRB and center it, and then maybe put additional information along the side if they really wanted. You know, like as an example, um, you know, I'm looking at the Spyro Reignited one right now. Maybe I'll show it on screen. They got the, the logo up there, and then they have uh, Activision next to it, just like there's Nintendo there, and then they have some other uh, SKU numbers and the copyright and all that. Nintendo could have did that, filled in the space a little bit, made it look a little bit nicer, even if the logo might have been a little tiny. Uh, but they didn't do that. And obviously... Uh, you know, this whole giant logo in other countries is a little bit harder to do in North America just because of the ESRB requirement to have that on the cartridge and on the box. Now, I think it's a little ridiculous. You have to have it on the cartridge and the box. But remember, because it's a physical thing that can be resold and can be resold without the box, the ESRB rating has to legally be there. Now, uh, it would be nice to see maybe um, a different implementation of that ESRB rating, maybe you know on the back of the cartridge or something. But then again, there's also uh, information on the back of, of these cartridges as well for manufacturing. So it's kind of a sticky situation to try to make this look better. The reason this has become controversial, though, is be isn't because it matters if you just bought the games to play the games. Most people don't even look at their cartridge art to care. But people care about this in particular because it's a collectible. Now, obviously, if you're leaving your copy sealed and that's how you're going to collect it, okay, like what's the what's the cartridge art matter at that point? You're never going to see it. It's going it, to it's a sealed copy. The value to you is in holding that sealed copy. But for some people, they bought the physical version to play it, but also because it's collectible. Think of it like Amiibo. People buy Amiibo. Some leave them in the box. Some take them out of the box, but still collect them, right? So it's still collectible to them personally. It's just a collector's item that they don't care about maintaining the maximum value on that collection item. Leaving anything sealed maintains the maximum value on a collector's item. But some people like to display them. Some people like to play with and use their collector's items, but still kind of keep Keep them around many many years down the road like being able to go back and look at their collector's item a decade from now two decades from now and reminisce about it or just have it in, you know on their shelf somewhere uh, and and for people like that that would be looking at the cartridge as part of the collectability of it it is a little you know fugly <laughs> uh, I don't know if 
Nintendo was even thinking about this when they made the Super Mario 3D All-Stars logo. Uh, it could have been altered, by the way. I feel like there's a way they could have altered the logo to make it fit better on uh, on the cartridge because, you know, maybe instead of going with that round design, they could have flattened it out a little bit. You know, what I'm basically saying is have Super Mario and then 3D put next to Super Mario, um, you know, and then just bump the Super Mario 3D text down into the circle a bit more, and then all of a sudden it's a much wider perspective and then easier to put above the esrb logo and keep the same font sizes and still have it legible again this is just stuff nintendo could have done to make it just a little better looking for collectors and again this normally doesn't matter we don't talk about switch cartridges beyond i guess what when the switch launched and we talked about how nasty the cartridges taste uh and you know that this was um part of a safety choking hazard thing was actually originally uh why this coating was applied to switch cartridges because nintendo was afraid of uh you know with the switch blowing up and these cartridges being smaller even than ds or 3ds cartridges that children might put it in their mouth so the hope is by putting an agent on there that tastes gross it's not toxic but it tastes gross that it would, would deter children from chewing on it and and swallowing and, and having a choking hazard. And I think we all can agree the taste of it isn't very good. And if a baby stuck one of these cartridges in their mouth, um, they are highly likely to spit it out and not want anything to do with it. I'm not going to test that on the baby because that's a little cruel and unusual punishment. But it's an extreme situation where Nintendo was looking out because these cartridges are so small and could, you know, they're, they're just about the right size for someone to attempt to swallow one. So that's like the only time we've really ever talked about the cartridges. We rarely talk about the art on the cartridges or anything because it ends up not matter. We'll talk about box art once in a while if it's really, really weird box art. Um, I didn't talk about this, but like the FIFA, the new FIFA box art, you know, and how like it looks like someone just made it in MS Paint. It's really embarrassingly bad. Um, like, well, th that, those kind of topics will come up once in a while, but we don't really talk about um, cartridges like that. But this is a collector's item cartridge, a collector's item cartridge that many people are going to see and or collect on the line, you know, and, and literally want in their collection uh, and keep in their collection. Like if you were to resell any other Switch game, there's going to be limited physical copies of this. If Nintendo sticks to their guns and they don't release any more physical copies after March 31st uh, of 2021, yeah, there's going to be a limited amount of these out there. And they're... You know, people are going to care about this. People are going to... You know, one thing this does do, by the way, is it technically makes it even more collectible because now you're going to want to get another cart from a different region that has the different art on the on the cartridge because that's going to create a different value for that down the road. So if you know anything about collecting, there's different art versions, different cartridges. Like if you, if you collect, like, you know, the collector's version of of uh, the golden cartridge version of Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask. There's actually multiple versions of it in different regions that have slightly different things in it. Um, like there's a bug in one of the uh, cartridge versions of Majora's Mask, the, one of the gold cartridge versions. I actually own that one um, that uh, causes your save file to wipe out if you save a, a certain owl statue in one of the dungeons. Uh, that, that glitch does not exist in other versions of the collection uh, of, of, of the gold cartridge collection version. So, like, you know, if you get both versions, because both versions will have different values, and that's what's going to happen here, is that the shrunk down art is likely going to have more or less value than uh, one of the blown up art ones that you see. So it's, again, a very minor thing in the grand scheme of things, but it's also, you know, feels like this is nintendo it feels like they could have found a better way or a better way to remake that logo on the north american one to make it look a little nicer with the required esrb rating and i know some people say just shrink the esrb rating but um it's probably a legal thing they probably can't it that's probably as small as they're allowed to go on these cartridges so anyways uh <laughs> you guys let me know what you think about this do you even care i'm guessing most of you do not care you know, that if you just bought it to play it and you're not really caring about the collector's value, okay, but I know physical has been a big demand for this game in comparison to pretty much any other game released on Switch because of the limited run, which makes it more collectible. So even if you're not going to leave it sealed, people want to collect it. So is this something you care about as a collector, about having better looking art on your cartridge, uh, especially when, I mean, Nintendo... <laughs> 
There's already criticism of this game being lazy, and this looks like a very, very lazy, I'm just going to shrink it and slap it to the right thing. Uh, and I know I do that with, with uh, some of my, my thumbnails and all that, but there's a purpose to it. There, there doesn't really seem to be a purpose here other than we didn't want to rework the logo to make it work better on a North American cartridge. Anyways, you guys are look better, I guess, in this case. I know, such a minor thing. But these minor things matter when you're talking about a collector's item. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.